We can help you get your life back on track. The Law Brothers took care of everything and settled my case for $400,000. $500,000 for my case. Boom, baby. Call us. We're the Law Brothers. Call 1-800-222-2222 or visit lawbrothers.com. We're here at the Magical Disneyland Resort where we are giving away four one-day, one-park tickets as part of our celebration of Pixar Fest. Tuesday. Good afternoon. This is the KTLA 5 News at 1. I'm Glenn Walker. And I'm Lou Parker. We begin with breaking news this afternoon out of Charlotte, North Carolina, where there are reports that several police officers have been shot. KTLA 5 Samantha Cortese joining us now with more on the breaking situation. Samantha. Good afternoon, Glenn and Lou. Some unfortunate news to start off this hit today. Local news outlet WSC, uh, WSOC is reporting from multiple sources one deputy U.S. Marshal has died after being shot during an investigation in East Charlotte. They also say multiple officers are shot. Few details here coming in just before our hit right now. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, or CMPD, was with the U.S. Marshals Task Force. That task force has multiple agencies involved. We can confirm it's the local Charlotte Police, among possibly the ATF. They were serving a search warrant when they came under fire. This happened around 1.30 local time, 10.30 here in California. WSOC, again, that's a local news outlet in Charlotte, reporting two suspects are involved. One is wounded. They also report one officer was shot in the chest, unknown if that's the deputy who passed, along with two other officers who were shot in the leg. They also report upon arrival, their chopper captured video of an armored vehicle driving through yards, knocking over recycling bins before officers removed a person with blood on their shirt. They were loaded into an ambulance. Now, our video right now is limited because local news has been told and has decided to no longer fly their helicopter over the scene to avoid revealing police tactics or locations as this is a very active situation. WBTV, another local outlet in Charlotte, is reporting more than 100 shots were fired in this incident. They are getting video from viewers that show snipers in people's backyards used as a defense in this situation as it was unfolding. Law enforcement shut down many highways and streets. You're looking at those highways right now in Charlotte multiple officers had to get to emergency rooms as soon as as possible there is still a very active scene CMPD SWAT team currently there reporters say they were told all trauma doctors and nurses were called in to assist in what's being called a mass casualty incident. The mayor of Charlotte, also the governor there, has uh, expressed concern saying all resources will be available to help in this investigation. CMPD just released information saying the scene is still active and they will hold a news conference once it stabilizes. Glenn and Lou, again, just to confirm, according to local news sources, that one U.S. Marshal deputy has died. Multiple officers currently, uh, we hear one is in the ICU and uh, have been shot in this ongoing search warrant investigation. More to come as we get details. Back to you. All right, Samantha Cortese, thank you. To developing news, shots ring out at the Encino home of a music executive leaving a security guard wounded, and now the search is on for the suspects. Three suspects fled the scene of the shooting early this morning. The security guard was transported to the hospital. The extent of his injuries is unclear. Kimberly Chang, live in Encino with the latest on this investigation. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, police are searching for at least three suspects who remain outstanding at this hour. A security guard was shot on property. If you take a look right beside me, you can see this long private driveway. Well, it leads up to that residence. According to public records, the home belongs to music industry executive Amir Ismailian, who also goes by Cash XO. He co-manages the artist The Weeknd and their record label XO. A detective said that Ismailian and others were home at the time of the shooting. According to LAPD, it happened before 2.30 in the morning. The victim, believed to be in his 30s, was sitting inside a guard structure when he heard gunshots and then realized that he had been wounded. He was able to tell police that he saw three males taking off. The motive at this point in the investigation is unclear. I talked with a neighbor earlier who said she was aware about who lived here because she recently looked at the home for sale. 
based on like the photos they posted and so on, we assumed who it would be. Um, but yeah, it's kind of disarming to hear something like that, especially we walk a lot here and you kind of move into areas like this hoping things like that don't happen, but it still gets to you. I'm thinking it was targeted, especially given the high profile of the person that lives here. And the Sky 5 aerial showed the guard shack and the letters XO printed on a basketball court. You could see evidence markers around the property. Now, the home on Jaden Lane near Encino Avenue was listed for sale in January for just under $12 million. It is reportedly equipped with a state-of-the-art security system. Back here live, there is no suspect description available. We're told again that they do not know a possible motive. I also reached out to LAPD a short while ago for an update on the the condition of the victim, but they say at this point, it's unknown. Reporting live in Encino, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. Kimberly, thank you. Developing news in the Antelope Valley, where the CHP is investigating two separate crashes that killed a total of six people, both happening along Highway 138 or the Pear Blossom Highway. This morning, a minivan veered into a tractor trailer that was on the side of the road near Hample Avenue in Pear Blossom. The minivan driver died at the scene. And last night, five people died in a crash not too far from that location, but in the town of Little Rock. Investigators are looking into whether speed, drugs, or alcohol played a role in that accident. One area resident says safety improvements are needed along the highway. Well, we'd like to see uh, more safety along 138, safety measures, less speeds for all the different motorists that are coming through, whether it's big rigs or whatever it is, just to lower the speed limit on 138. Local residents say the 138 can be so dangerous and deadly, they have dubbed it Blood Alley. We're also following developing news as Gaza war protests continue at college campuses across the country. Here at home, tensions are still high at UCLA after dueling demonstrations grew heated over the weekend. KTLA 5's Lauren Lister, live now in Westwood with the latest. Lauren? Yeah, Glenn and Lou, a walkout from class a short time ago and now a, a rally of uh, protesters inside this encampment. You can see we're behind barricades. We don't have access. We're going to try to uh, go around and get a better vantage point after this report. But you can see the crowds there, uh, the, the flags, the clapping. This is all in a protest encampment on UCLA's campus that is now in its fifth day. And at noon, a walkout of students and faculty uh, heading to to the encampment for what you're seeing now. Take a look. We saw as uh, people appearing to be part of this walkout were uh, moving through campus shortly after noon. And they wouldn't speak to us when we asked uh, for any interviews. And out here, the uh, area that this is in, uh, it's a large encampment that, that we've been focused on. Uh, organizers say four to 500 people at its height during the day, maybe a few hundred overnight, but they aren't letting us in. They're saying that they want to protect the people that are participating for their safety. They don't want news cameras inside. Uh, we've seen some tensions outside just with some heated uh, viewpoints and, and some conflict, but nothing like what we saw yesterday and, and no major counter protests of any organized kind to speak of. Uh, let me show you this. Earlier, uh, in a barricaded area of the university where this is taking place in Dixon Court, we saw firefighters go in to inspect for safety issues and fire hazards this morning. The university is saying they've increased the safety team personnel on site and added security measures after tensions flared yesterday in a statement. The vice chancellor saying UCLA has a long history of peaceful protest and they were heartbroken that some physical altercations broke out. Uh, we are seeing some frustration today on campus with the way security is being handled. There is no law and order in this campus. It's total anarchy. Thugs in there were pushing me out. These supposed security people were calling me an agitator for going in there. I am all for protesting. They should be allowed to protest, but legally, there should be law and order. Stop killing children. 
Yesterday, confrontations uh, between protesters and counter protesters. Uh, demonstrators estimated in the thousands on campus. Pro Israel supporters setting up a counter protest near the pro Palestinian encampment.